Hi guys, it's me, Keisha, and I am here with my All Tea All Shade. BET presents the Encore Season 1 Episode 4 Review. Disclaimer, we get it popping over here. We have fun over here. Nothing is to be taken seriously. If you're a stick in the mud, this is not the channel for you. Just advising you now to get it out the way. Because <laughs> the block is up. Somebody got smart in my comment section on, um, I think it was the Married to Medicine review or something that I just did last week. And <laughs> like a few of y'all got under, got underneath the person comments. I'm so, ooh, the block is hot. <laughs> I was like, y'all know, y'all already know. And that person got blocked, of course. Oh, it was somebody that was in the comment section like, how dare you going to talk about somebody and you literally sitting on the floor <laughs> in your house or whatever, not knowing that I'm that bitch. You know what I'm saying? Not knowing that I live in a high-rise building. But okay, yeah, I'm sitting on the floor, all right. <laughs> so, but and that shit was funny because y'all was like, the block is hot, bitch. Like, you about to get, get it, get it. <laughs> I love y'all though. But anywho, so on tonight's episode of The Encore, everyone is mentally exhausted after the dinner fight. The twins feel that Misha is intimidated by them because they're more talented, talented than her. Um, I don't even think that Misha is intimidated just by them. I think that Misha is intimidated by everybody um, because all of her past insecurities are now being pushed to the forefront because when she was in the group 702, remember, 702 was her group in the beginning when they were first pushed out here into the world. It was her group. She was the lead, her and Irish and Irish's twin. And it was another young lady. And then something or other happened and the Irish twin sister and the other girl left the group or whatever. And then in came Mila or whatever. I think that's her name, Mila. And she then became lead singer and um, Misha got pushed to the background and she felt some type of way because this was her baby, her group or whatever. Her family started this group. And she's even gone on record with saying that she didn't feel like that her vocals were used and, you know, Mila always got the same lead and she had a problem with that. And ultimately that was the demise of their group because, you know, it was jealousy and all this stuff being involved. And I think now with her being in this house and basically being told that girl, you don't know how to sing. It's making her realize, damn, so them producers and stuff wasn't hating on me. I can't fucking sing. And I might have ruined my fucking career trying to get something that I should have never had in the first place. So it got to be a hard pill to swallow because they still could have been out here putting out music, been on top. You know what I'm saying? And ego and pride and wanting to be in the forefront and stuff got in the way when we see now they're back on the chitlin circuit doing, you know, shows and who's still lead? Mila, because bitches need checks. So I think that's a hard pill for her to swallow, realizing that her voice is not as strong as she thought that it probably was. Um, so the twins feel like Aubrey is playing the fence and needs vocal training. I was like, the shade of it all um uh, aubrey can get a little scratchy in her voice but aubrey can sing at the end of the day um aubrey i feel is trying to straddle the fence and be friends with everybody and appease everybody but still kind of going for self at the same token um so Elijah talks to Aubrey alone in her room. And by the way, that room was nasty. I don't understand how people get on television and be in these houses and the rooms be so nasty, clothes and shoes everywhere. I understand y'all living out of a suitcase, but I'm pretty sure that fucking house has closet. Like that shit is disgusting to me. And it wasn't just Aubrey. It was Aubrey and Keely. It was more so on Keely's side of the room, but the room itself was just nasty. Um, and the twins room was junky too. 
So Elijah talks to Aubrey about the drama going on in the house or whatever. He's trying to figure out like what the fuck is going on. So Elijah, you know, says to her, do you trust me? And Aubrey was like, well, you know, the girls being the twins were like, Elijah knows what it is. He knows when we get into a room who's running shit, he knows what I do. So he looked like the fuck, what the fuck they mean by that? So now he feeling some type of way. So Elijah was like, well, I've had a number one. <laughs> like, I don't know what the fuck these hoes on, but your boy over here is doing a damn thing. So Aubrey was like, you know, well, they'll say the same thing or whatever. So Elijah was like, in terms of success, they've had the least amount compared to everybody. And I was like, ooh, burn, but it's the truth. So like I said, now Elijah looking like, oh, so these hoes been talking shit about me? Oh, okay. And I personally felt like there wasn't something that Aubrey should have told him whether it was true or not why are you doing that that was messy as fuck and then I didn't even like Elijah's response because you're there to produce the music don't even get involved in the caddy bullshit I would have took what she said had a mental note about it brought it up at a later date but I wouldn't have let it um bother me or sway my decisions or my feelings about the twins or whatever because I'm just here to produce music. I don't give a fuck how these hoes feel about me. So I wouldn't even make that comment of being catty about well they the least, you know, um the, they're the least successful out of everybody. I just felt like that was a little bit unprofessional. So um the twins are in the kitchen and one of them asks, tells Keely to talk to Aubrey because remember her and Aubrey had words. But she was like, she don't want to talk to the devil because she already know how that snake moves. So Keely says, you know, I'll show you the entire process of how, meaning like I'll show you all the text messages and the conversations of how, um, you know, I haven't spoken to Aubrey for years until she found out I was coming to this house and she called me like, hi, babe, I love you. Basically singing like, that girl didn't fuck with me. And then as soon as she found out we was going to be on this show, she tried to, you know, make allies with me and act like it was all good. And then now that we heard the bitch acting fake. So Aubrey overhears her and Aubrey comes into the kitchen. Kitchen was like, Keely, shut the fuck up. <laughs> I was like, well, God damn. So she was like, you don't do shit in this house. Don't go behind my back and say shit about me. You're such a gossipy ass, messy ass bitch. I can't stand bitches like you. And Keely just sitting there. Not saying nothing back again. I was like, Keely, how you gonna have all this mouth and start all this shit and then let everybody cuss you the fuck out and you don't never say nothing? Like every time somebody finally cuss you out, you just sit there like you in a rap battle <laughs> waiting to go next. Like, girl, I need for you to be able to cuss some bitches out. Like you come across like a punk. How the fuck you letting Aubrey Gizmo ass punk you? Aubrey literally looks like lard she looked like crisco lard that's been sitting in the, the tin can on your grandmama stove and as soon as you heat it up that bitch is about to melt like all you got to do is poke her in the stomach and she'll say Woohoo! <laughs> that was a good one like girl obviously that would look like the michelin man girl i can't let no bitch that look like a cotton swab try to punk me girl if you'll get the fuck out of my face looking like an obese Dolly Parton girl by. So, um, Keely and her confessional was like, Aubrey is uh, on here because she's a reality star and she's not going to pass up a check. And I was like, uh, the same thing for everybody else that's on this motherfucker. Everybody on here for a motherfucking check and for uh, some time, a 15 minutes of fame and to feel that glory days again. Everybody's on here for a reason. So it was shady, but at the same token, this is what she does for a living. So, whoop. All y'all there. We all on the same platform. So um, the next day, um, Cedar reminds them that they have a job to do, basically, and asks what's going on. Because if they don't agree on something, Aubrey gets to make an executive decision. So, of course, she's reveling in this. Like, I get the final say so if these hoes can't make an agreement on things. So she tells them that by the next time she sees them, they need to make up a group, a group name. So the twins go to talk to Misha to clear the air and they both apologize to each other and they tell her that they want her a part of things and, you know, she accepts their apology, but she still doesn't know if she can fully trust them. And I mean, I felt like based off this episode, the twins seem like they were trying to put a good foot forward, but I mean, we've already seen their ways, so I would take that with a grain of salt as well. So, 
Uh, Pam writes a gospel record. You know, she that's her wheelhouse right here. And one of the twins plays the piano on it. It's a really nice song. It's really, you know, a nice, pleasant gospel song. I feel like it's something that she needed for herself and for her soul. Um, Misha sings on the record and sounds a hot diggity damn mess. But the twins don't say nothing. They give her their full support because, you know, she trying. She trying, Jesus. Everybody ain't able. You know what I'm saying? At least the girl is here and she trying. That's all anybody cares about at this point. But I just need for Misha just to say singing is not my ministry. <laughs> so Aubrey is bored and she ain't even saying on the track yet. She was like, this ain't my fan base right here. But I was like, this is about a group effort. Every song can't be popping your pussy and fucking a nigga in the club. Like, come on now, be a team player. So, and we all know like, what you mean this ain't your type of music, girl? Don't do my Jesus. Uh-uh. So Pam cries over her past. And Keely went to, like, console her. And then she jumped back real quick. And she remembered, oh, this bitch don't like to be touched. She had touched me not. <laughs> so um, Keely still thinks that she's creative director. And she goes to talk to Aaliyah, the choreography, about her ideas for their performance. But Aubrey comes in and takes over and shows Aaliyah her plans that she made. And Keely is, of course, feeling some type of way. She mad. She and her fee-fees because, like, Aubrey done one up her again. Uh, but this is the first time I've we've seen Keely try to do anything. So it's just like Keely got all of this. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I can't even think of the word right now. But Keely got all of the gall to act like she's been doing so much. And then, like, it's just being unnoticed. But, like, girl, you ain't did nothing. Like, this is the first time we've seen you make a decision or an idea or anything. So, she, like I said, she hating Aubrey at this point. So, Keely feels that the girls will see through um, Aubrey's act soon enough. Because uh, she's the one that has been there since the beginning. Okay, so Shamari wants, and I was like, no, nah, I'm going to say that though. So Shamari wants to be on the skeleton record. And Aubrey, however, wants to keep the record as it is because she don't want to start a bunch of confusion. And I understood where she was coming from at first, but let the girl just sing on the song. So at the end of the day, Shamari ends up being on the record. And you can tell this pissed Aubrey off because at this point, that's when Aubrey mentally checked out. She was just like, fuck it, because she didn't want Shamari on that goddamn song. Um, And I don't know why she didn't want Shamari on the song. Maybe because she feel like Shamari can sing better than her. I don't know. It was weird. But at that point, I know this is when she got an attitude and when she stopped um, participating. So at this point, None of the girls are really liking Aubrey's behavior, her attitude. They not liking how she doing her little queen shit or whatever. But I was like, the queen is supposed to make decisions and stuff like that. That's what their job is. So y'all can't get mad at her for making certain decisions because that's what she's here for. I feel like it's just they don't want to listen to certain people. I feel like Pam was a pushover. Pam didn't really do nothing when she was queen. So anybody that is assertive, they're going to have an issue with because they don't want to feel like somebody feel like they know more or whatever. So um, <clears throat> during the skeleton choreography rehearsal, Aubrey is missing. She is missing in action. Everybody's asking, where's Aubrey? Where's Aubrey? Because she's one of the girls on the song. It's Aubrey, the twins, and now Shamari. So she tells uh, Pam that she ain't going down to rehearsal. Like She was just like, fuck it. She's sitting on the floor just like me, child, with them titties hanging. And she was like, fuck that. I ain't going nowhere. So uh, the girls keep asking, where's Aubrey? Nivea ass so fucking horny she want to fuck the faucet i'm like nivia sit your ass the fuck down girl so everyone is asking where aubrey is and she's in the room sleep snoring and shit they're like i said disappointed in her behavior i think at this point aubrey had mentally checked out and i think that i think personally aubrey has been going or battling depression, she's gained a lot of weight. I don't know if you guys seen the paparazzi photos of Aubrey, but I think that she personally is suffering from depression, maybe. Um, hold up, let me show you guys this picture of Aubrey. 
So this is a picture of Ari. As you can see, like she's gained a lot of weight. And I think that she's just depressed. You know what I'm saying? I think that she's like been binge eating and just sleeping and stuff like that. It's very sad to see because she was such a, you know, petite, small girl or whatever the case may be. But I think at that point in the show, she was just over it. She mentally checked out. And like I said, I think that she got her own issues that she was already dealing with. So Elijah confronts the twins about what Aubrey told him that they said. And they was like, that's a lie. Like, we would never say nothing like that about you. So everything is cool between them. So I was like, is Aubrey lying on the girls? If so, why would you do that? What was the point? Are you now on some Keely type shit? What the fuck is going on? Who's lying and who's telling the truth? Who do y'all think is lying? You think the twins actually said that or do you think that Aubrey is lying? I don't know at this point because I don't trust none of them. So everyone is waiting on Aubrey to sing on a gospel record so they can at least have one song finished as a group. Elijah goes to get her and she come down looking like Anna Nicole Smith in her last days. Like it just, it was just disheveled. It was giving me, I, I'm on drugs. I don't know what's going on with Aubrey. So he wants her to hit the high notes on the song and she gets into the booth and she was like, well, I just woke up. She making all these excuses and she get in the booth. She's cracking all over the place. She can't hit the notes. Elijah don't feel no soul from her. Like gospel just ain't her thing. And Aubrey don't like the record no way. She don't want to sing on it anyway. So it's just not really connecting. So Cinnamon um, comes to the studio, the vocal, the vocal coach, to listen to some of their records that they have done. And she critiques Aubrey's part um, on the Skeleton record because her timing is off. So Aubrey, however, is still not present. She's upstairs in her room, sleep again. One of the twins suggests Shamari take her part. And Shamari was like, eh, I don't really know if I want to do that. You know, like, that's fucked up. You know what I'm saying? So um, at the end of the day, they decide that Shamari needs to take uh, Aubrey's place on the record. And Shamari was like, she gonna be pissed. Um, but yeah, she gonna be pissed. But at the same token, you haven't been participating. So shit, decisions are being made without you. So Aubrey finally comes down and tells the girls that they're gonna have a party that night where they're gonna have to answer like truth or dare pretty much questions, but it's all about truth. And but she says that she's gonna make Irish the temporary queen because she's been having a stomach ache and she hasn't really been sleeping good, and everybody looking at her like bullshit. Like she just totally alienated herself, like she just off to herself. And I'm like, at this point, if you're not gonna participate in anything, go the fuck home. Somebody else could be there. Like, girl, stop. So everybody, like I said, has seen that she's checked out. Keely is happy that Aubrey is failing as queen. She feels that Aubrey is manipulating Irish and making Irish think that they're like really good friends and that she's the only person Irish can trust and this, this, and that or whatever. Um, I can see that. I can see that Aubrey and Keely are the same bitch, just a different race at the end of the day. They're both manipulative. They're both sneaky. They're both here to make reality television. They know what the fuck they're doing, both of them. So um, they play the game. One of the twins get the question, who should be replaced? And here we go with the drama. The other twin says Aubrey. And Keely, of course, was like, I agree. Amen, Jesus. Speak a word. So uh, Keely says that Aubrey was up all night on the phone. So that's why her ass is sleepy and tired because she was up all night. So Irish in her confession was like, Keely wants people not to like Aubrey. And, Bitch, I see you. We see each other. So Keely suggests that they take a vote to replace her as queen because they can do that. Aubrey is upstairs on the phone on FaceTime with one of her friends telling the friend what's going on in the house and says that Keely is a snake. Mind you, they share a room together, so she really ain't feeling laying next to her ass at night. And she says that half of the girls can't even do an A count. She want to be in a group where bitches know how to dance. Um, the girls then come up with the group name Blueprint. It's cute, but it's not something that I would have necessarily came up with. Um, Aubrey then was like telling her friend that shit is so bad in the house, like that she wants to go home at this point because these bitches are pretty much crazy and it's just not healthy for her. Um, so that was episode four. I give episode four a B plus. It was a good night. It was a good episode tonight. 
Um, really wasn't a lot, a lot going on. It was just like moving pieces on the board at this point. I can't wait to see how this whole thing is going to end up. I think I got a feeling like Aubrey's going to end up leaving early at some point because I know her and Elijah end up getting into it. And I, I, Elijah calls her a snake or some shit and tells her that she's been manipulated, lying to everybody at some point. And then we see that she moves out of the room. Her and Keely shared. It's just a mess, child, a mess, but it's great reality television. Let me know what you guys thought about tonight's episode of the encore down below in the comment section make sure to thumbs up this video like and subscribe and hit that notification bell button i love you guys and i will see you on the next video bye